What up, IDS Mob? Welcome to Harry Dating Combos. And today we're talking about how your fear of losing her is going to cause you to lose her. So I got a question from a guy that's been dating a woman for four months now. At some point he went for the kiss and she pulled back saying that it felt weird, they should continue to see each other. And he decided to go along with that plan because he feared potentially losing her. And now he's confused about where they're at, what she's doing, and what he should be doing going forth to try to get with her. And so I think this really highlights the importance of not being so fear-based in your dating approach and why it's beneficial to have an abundant mindset versus a scarcity mindset when dating. So we'll go ahead and get into this. By the way, guys, if you have questions you want me to answer on the show, leave comments down below. You can write to me at harry at introvertdatingsuccess.com. You can also go to introvertdatingsuccess.com for my eBooks, audiobooks, programs, and for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Let's get into his situation. So he says, I'm curious what you make of my case. I approached a girl in a park, took her number. Kudos for doing the cold approach. Not a lot of guys are willing to do that and risk the rejection. So you're already a level up for most guys. He says, I met her some 20 times in the span of four months. 20 times in the span of four months is around four or five times a month. So that's actually pretty decent. Although within that time frame, she should be wanting to suggest and request more of your time. But still, when you're into things, great job. So he says, I kissed her somewhere around the eighth meeting. She said after a moment of kissing that she didn't feel anything, but we can keep meeting, quote, with no expectation. Usually by date two, you should be going for the kiss. Even if it ends up not being successful, you need to put out there that you're trying to take this beyond more than just a friendship. Because if you don't, one, the woman could think that you're not interested or possibly gay, but also, also, you start giving the feeling that this is gonna be more of a friendship build than a relationship build. And that's your fault because you didn't make that move. So if you made that move on date two, for example, you wouldn't be so heavily invested in this girl that if she rejected the kiss, you'd want to stick around. You would just be like, okay, well, it's been two dates. She didn't like the kiss. Maybe I'll try for a third date to see if she does a kiss on that date. But then after that, I'm out of here and there'd be no harm, no foul because you wouldn't be as heavily invested. This is what we call the sunken cost fallacy, whereby you feel as though the more time you spend with the person, then you just have to make it work because you've already spent time, effort, energy, attention, and money, and you want a return on your investment. But if you do the kind of investing earlier that lets you figure out quickly, quickly that a woman is possibly not that interested in a relationship, then that's you doing your due diligence and that's you being able to get out of your own way versus if you wait too long, now you're in your own way because now she doesn't kiss you or she kisses you, but says she's not feeling it like that but you already have all these feelings invested. Whereas on day two, not so much. So then she offers the whole thing of like, well, I'm not really feeling the kiss, but we can continue to meet up with no expectation. Now, he he waited till day eight. So by day eight, he's done spent several hours with her. They've done built some memories together and these things are already bonding him to her. So at the point where she says, I want to date with no expectation or meet you with no ex ex expectations. You're thinking, but I, I want to be in a relationship, but now there's a problem. And it's that if the goal that you had was to get in a relationship and you're finding out on date eight that she doesn't want that, the question then becomes, do you now give this person up and just say, okay, well, you know what? You said you, you, you don't want to try to date with the purpose of potentially being in a relationship and I'm trying to do that. So I'm out of here or... Do you say, ah, oh, but oh, we built so much, so much time in together and we have these memories and she's a really good person and I, I'd rather have some of her attention in a friendship realm than none of her attention by trying to ask for a relationship. And this is where men end up in a lot of friend zone situations because you don't want to reject a woman that's trying to put you there, even though that's not what you want. So what does this guy say next? He says, I agree to it, fearing to lose her and having some hint of hope seeing her overall behavior. But I withdrew physical attention at that point, mainly just hugging for goodbye. So basically he's saying that because he feared not being able to have her around, that it was better to go along with her program. And this is again, this is a trap that a lot of guys fall into. I myself 
fell into this trap many, many, many times in college where I was like, oh, she doesn't want to be my girlfriend, but we'll, we'll still be cool. I'll still hang around. And then if I hang around long enough, you know, I'm going to convince her that, that I'm really a good enough guy to be in a relationship with. Never worked. But you know what did work? And I found this out by accident is that I had a girl that I had a crush on in college and I told her that I liked her. I thought she liked me. As soon as I told her, surprise, surprise, she stopped liking me that way or she suddenly felt weird around me, which happens more often than not. And guys, take a minute to learn that, that when you tell women you like them, if they're not there yet, it doesn't matter what you feel. It matters what they feel. So anyway, so then I ignored her for like two months straight. Like I I, I left the school. I went on tour for a while uh, with the theater company. I started learning more about how dating works, how attraction works for women. And one of the things that I learned is that a, absence makes the heart grow fonder, but also, also that me trying to negotiate and pester a woman into a relationship and into feeling things for me was only going to push them away more. But I also learned that on the other hand, if I left them alone, if I just completely ignored them, if I went from, because right now, believe it or not, she also has time built in with this guy. He is now also her habit. And what she's not yet aware of is how will she feel if that habit that she's built up with you goes away? And so I learned that if a woman's used to talking to you on a consistent basis, even if she was ghosting you towards the end, she still is used to having you in some portion of her life, even if it's just on the outside looking in. But when that attention goes away, when that conversation goes away, when that time spent goes away, a woman that might've been on the fence starts thinking, man, like this guy's not around anymore. I haven't heard from him in a while. What's he up to? Why hasn't he contacted me? And that's the first layer of thought. But the subconscious layer of thought is, but why do I care so much about if this guy's talking to me or not? Why am I suddenly bothered that he's not trying to touch me or text me or ask me to go places anymore? Like, why aren't I getting that? And then through that thought process, they convince themselves to come to the conclusion that if she's asking so much about you, it must be because she actually wants you. Because now she's actually feeling what it's like without you around and she doesn't like that feeling. The problem most guys have is they spend their time trying to chase a woman or convince her, which is not allowing her to naturally have the feeling of choice to choose you. Women need to feel like they are the ones choosing you in order to want to go forth with some kind of relationship. The problem this guy has is because he's afraid of losing her at all, he's unable to realize that were he to actually go away, like if he, if she had said to him, hey, I don't think we should be kissing or making out or doing whatever, but we can still meet up as just friends. If he had just said, you know what, I appreciate that, but you know, even though we're not boyfriend and girlfriend now, my purpose of dating you was to lead towards a relationship of some kind. And so you're saying you don't feel that. You know what? It is what it is. It's totally fine. Uh, best of luck to you. If you change your mind, hit me up. And if I'm still available, we can go out sometime. If he had done that, one, the woman would have seen that he had enough balls to not buy into her whole be my friend, but nothing else lie. Because women do this to guys all the time and men think they have to accept it. And they're unaware that the guys that these women end up getting with are the guys that did not accept the friendship request. So this is, in, in essence, kind of a BS test to see what you're really about and if you're going to be bending to her will or setting up your own will, which is, I want a relationship. If you don't want that, I will not be around. Those are the terms. And most guys are afraid to set the terms, right? And then also, also, if he had said, hey, you know what? It is what it is, but I'm not going to be around. That At that point, she would have had a decision to make, which is, do I actually let this guy walk out of my life or do I try to go out with him again and kiss him again and see if I can maybe build up something to him which ideally at this with this amount of time spent in she should have built up because by date by date eight really by date 10 a woman should be all in on trying to actually date you in a relationship capacity this guy has now spent four months with her and two of those months they were dating as soon as the kiss happened no 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 let's not do that we can still hang out and now he spent the last two months hanging out with her, doing nothing other than just wasting his time. Yes, I'm saying trying to be friends with her during the last two months is a waste of time because he wanted to be romantic and she put that on the side and he agreed to it and he should not have. Versus if he had, on date eight said, hey, it is what it is, best of luck to you. If you change your mind, maybe he would have gone a month without seeing her. But I can guarantee almost that like after that month, she would have hit him up. Hey, so-and-so, how you doing? 
what are you up to? We should meet up again and blah, blah, blah. And at that point, she would have been making all the moves. She would have been coming towards him. She would have been chasing him. And if she's chasing you, she can't be replacing you. Why? Because if she's chasing you, it means that it's her idea to go after you, which means she's going to be convincing herself that she actually has this interest that she didn't think she had before. But this guy is not one to risk that. But all he's doing right now is risking any chance of getting with her because he's agreed to her terms, which is we're just friends. We're just hanging out. It is what it is. So then he says she started. So after this, she started to dress up even more after my drunk uh, SMS telling her that the quote ice is thin and she should not wear such things. Uh, so we basically told her, Hey, you're, you're dressing in, in skanky stuff and it's turning me on. So you're making it kind of temp temptuous for me. So please stop doing that. And then she agreed to dress up more to cover herself up. I, I don't know why this guy is hustling backwards because I don't know how she was dressing up beforehand. But if they were still going out and she was still wearing stuff that was reeling, it's teasing, but also could be that she still has a level of like or whatever. I don't know. This is a lot of mixed signals and confusion. I don't live in the land of maybe. This is why, again, if she had offered friendship in the first place, I'd have been like, I'm out. Because I know if we're trying to be friends and she's still coming around me wearing like stuff that's showing up her goodies and stuff like that, I'm going to be confused. I don't want to be confused. I want to know that you're either dressing up like that because you're trying to tempt me to do some stuff or you're not. And I, I don't live in the land of maybe like that. So this guy's got a woman that's been acting very confusing. Not a big fan. So then he says, I wasn't escalating overall. She finally burst with, you will not even hug me? What to make of that? Well, uh, even though she's not trying to date you, women still like attention. And so as you're pulling your attention, she's starting to feel a little bit of, wait a minute, why are you getting the same level of attention as before? That does not mean, though, that she's necessarily romantically interested. That at this point, the best way for you to tell that she's romantically interested is for you to leave her alone, for you to say, you know what? I get that you want to do a friendship thing. That's just not what I'm on right now. So, hey, best of luck to you. And if you happen to change your mind in the future, hit me up and we can go out on an actual date. I'd love to take you some time. But right now, you don't seem to want that. It is what it is. And I'm out. And that's you standing on your principle. That's you standing on business for what you want. And if she decides that she doesn't want to be romantic, then she doesn't get the gift of your time. Yes, guys, you need to start looking at your time as a gift. When you're giving out money, when you're paying for dates, when you're spending your time and energy, that is a gift to a woman. If she decides to use that gift on the basis of, well, I don't want to date you, but I'll use you as a friend, that's not something she's earned or deserved, and that's not something you should be giving up. So if this were me, I would have been out, and I would have been looking up other women and if she hit me up, I'd have been like, oh, hey, you know what? I'd love to see you tonight, but I'm busy tonight. I got other plans, but let me, you know, we can, I can fit you in for something else later this week. Like right now she has all the cards and women know when they hold all the cards with men. And guess what? Women also don't respect men that are allowing them to hold all the cards as it pertains to a relationship and dating situation. That's really why you're not getting what you want because you're sitting there following her plan and women don't want that. So then the last part he says, the girl is very shy, introverted, in general, half of meeting cheerful and the second half filled with passive aggression. So I wanted to spell the myth that because she's introverted and shy that she's acting this way, women that have high interest across the board don't act like this. And I say this time and time again because we men want to treat different women differently. Like, oh, well, this one's extroverted, but this one's shy and, and introverted. So therefore, she's going to act this way. All women act the same when they have high interest, which is even if they're introverted, they're going to do things to make you know that they like you, including at the very least accepting your kiss. She's not accepting the kiss. This is indicating that she either has low interest or it's like teeter tottering. But either way, you continuing to stay in the situation and taking the runners up prize of, oh, look, I get to be your friend. That's not going to ever, ever get you into a relationship with this woman. So what I would recommend you do if you're bold enough to do it, and if you're willing to potentially take a risk, is to tell this woman that, you know what? I've been thinking about it. I realize that as much as I enjoy you as a person, I'm not in this for friendship. And so, you know what? I'm gonna let you be over there. And if you happen to change your mind and I'm still available, let's meet up and, and get reconnected in a dating capacity because I really think we could be something, but I'm not trying to stick around if that's not what you want, all right? Now, you're probably hearing that and you're freaking the freak out. You're probably thinking like, oh my God, what if I do that? I'm a bit of an older guy. I've tried this enough times. There have been times where I've told women straight up, hey, you know what? 
friendship thing not going to work, whatever. And they weren't feeling the romantic vibes and I never saw them again. Guess what? I rarely think about those women anymore. At the same time, I've had women that were kind of wishy-washy. I was like, hey, you know what? Uh, not in for the friend vibe. So hit me up whenever. And guess what? They hit me up. We went out for a while, hooked up. It was all great. So you have to determine what you feel most comfortable with, but you have to learn as a dater, as a guy, that you can't always stick in your comfort zone because that is the place where you're not going to get what you want. You have to be willing sometimes to risk losing. It's like playing poker. Sometimes you got to bet a certain hand, hoping that's going to play. And sometimes you, if you have the, the wrong hand, you got to know, hey, you know what? I got to give these cards up for something that's potentially better. And sometimes you get better, sometimes you don't. But I guarantee what you don't want is to continue to stick in a friendship where you're going to be consistently frustrated because you're going to keep every so often trying to make this a relationship or trying to talk to her about her feelings and why she wasn't going to pick you yet. And let's talk about your childhood and where all this fear comes from. And those are conversations you don't want to have. And those are conversations she doesn't want to have. So you're better off cutting your losses now and maybe potentially getting in a relationship with her after she has time to really sit and think with herself or get in a relationship with, sit with somebody else that's not going to waste your time like this woman is. So hopefully this answers your question. It may not be the answer you want to hear, but that's the one you're going to get. And for the rest of you guys, if you have situations you're going through, you can write to me at harry at introvertdatingsuccess.com. You can also leave a comment down below or in under in any of my videos, and I'll be happy to answer it on one of these shows. Also, guys, if you need more help, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching at introvertdatingsuccess.com. I also have a great program there called the Introvert Dating Success Membership Academy that gives you full access to a variety of video courses and other podcasts and interviews that I've done that will really elevate your dating life so you won't be lost in the dating world at large. So thank you guys for watching this video and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.